when I started talking to the producer, he had produced a film of mine called The Sky Lab, which is a film that's a very personal film. And then he wanted to do, you know, a film, a comedy with me. We started talking, and uh, there was one film that came to my mind um, that I had watched when I was a kid. was uh, called The Bat Seed. Oh, yes, Patty McCormick. Yes. <laughs> and I was like... I love this film and you know and then another film came to mind which was Lolita and I was like you know I, I know it's not like Lolita but originally I wanted something more like Lolita a little more you know like uh, the I don't know I, 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 won't, I won't get into it because in the end uh, I could have never find financing for it so but um, but I decided to to go into that idea of the bad seed and to make it more of a comedy because there's something about like a sociopath that I think is funny when you don't actually, when it's not in real life, you know? There's something about dark characters. I mean, I think, you know, my parents brought me to see a lot of films when I was a kid. And I remember when it came out uh, seeing uh, King of Comedy, which is about basically everyone's a, a psychopath in it. And, and, and I remember people were laughing, but they were nervous at the same time. And I, I, I really enjoyed that feeling, you know? There were moments that could have gone very wrong that could have gone too dark or too light how did you maintain a balance the scene in the balcony where you know lolo is getting throttled by jean rené i mean you yeah it goes very far i mean the film is a, like a french farce meets you know kind of like a film about like something that's pretty dark you know i always lo I, I enjoyed like walking that fine line between like you know it, lolo is really a terrible human being but at the same time you know, it's funny because he's also like a child. You know, what he does is really like a child. I mean, he uses itchy powder, you know, he's Instead of real up. polonium. Yeah, instead of polonium. It's too expensive, polonium. I've checked on the dark net. It's really, really expensive. It's like 1.6 million euros for one milligram of polonium. It's very expensive. You know, they killed a... So that's why you didn't use it or you thought it was funny? No, but I thought it was powder. funny that he looks for polonium, but he ends up with itchy powder, you know? He's like, he could be the master of destruction, but he's really just using itchy powder, you know? At, at the heart of it, you have two different relationships, of course, a mother-son relationship, and then a woman who's in her 40s who's finding love yeah. all over again. And this is, it's a triangle, and, but also very different um, two-by-two um, emotional um, act. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to mix, you know, I ended up mixing a few things in the film, which is like a woman finding love, and, uh, I mean, a woman and a man finding love in their 40s, like starting life again. You know, there's always this idea that kind of, not always this idea, but in some films, like it's almost like in, if you're in your 40s, your life is kind of over. <laughs> or, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's funny because um, before I shot this film, I was talking to my agent, I was like, turning 44 or whatever, and I said, hey, now I can play all the villain. You know, uh, I'm, I'm past 45 or whatever, you know, so I'll, I'll, be, I'll be evil from now on. Um, th this idea that anyone over 40 is not, you know, cannot fall in love, cannot start a life again, doesn't have fun, doesn't have, you know, this, I mean, especially for a woman. So I, I, just, I just wanted to show women that are happy, having fun, being silly. And sexual. Being goofy, being sexual, being, being happy and crazy and, you know, having all sorts of emotions and, and being fine with it. Also being, being, feeling good with themselves, even if they're neurotic, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's like. Talk a little bit about the casting of Lolo and Jean René, two actors whom you knew already. Yes, so no, actually, uh, uh, Lolo, uh, I wrote it for him, uh, Vincent Lacoste, he's a, y a young actor. I worked with him on the Sky Lab, S and I did also with uh, Karen Viard. She was also in the Sky Lab, a film you'll never see because no one will never buy it in this country. And so, uh, <laughs> just, I just tell you, that's the truth. Uh, but basically, it's, uh, I loved working with them, and, and uh, Vincent is a wonderful actor. Um, Karine Viard, who plays Ariane, is a wonderful actress, and I wrote it with them in mind. Karine told me, you know, I don't really play supporting parts anymore because she became a big star in between the time we shot the two films, and I didn't know that. So, you know, I wrote her a part, and I say, I'll write you really, really dirty, dirty lines, and I, I swear people will remember you in the film. <laughs> so I went for it, you know, with the lines. I was I had really fun doing those dirty, dirty lines. But um, I mean, like writing them was a lot of fun. And so, and saying them and acting them and filming them and editing them. And anyway, so. <laughs> 
And so, um, and, and then Vincent, I loved working with him on the Skylab. He, he's so, he's super professional, super smart, super funny. He, he's kind of a brilliant kid, so I, I wanted to work with him again. Was this also a cautionary tale about an indulged generation of kids? Do you know of Violette and Lolo? Uh, you know, I know kind of like this kind of situation for some parents, you know. It, this is an extreme version of it, but I also wanted to do an extreme version of it. I mean, my idea behind all this is like, you know, I show the film La Jeté in it, which is about the end of humanity. It's kind of like the film is about like this new generation of people with maybe, l you know, kind of this lack of empathy and maybe kind of as a society becoming, you know, kind of the end of the world kind of thing. I know this is <laughs> It's just a romantic comedy, but it's really about the end of the world because we're all becoming sociopath and we we don't care about what we're doing to each other anymore and destroying everything. So that's what it's about. That's what the film is really about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there it's I really about the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't every film about the end of the world? <laughs> you, you got to work with um, the DP, Thierry Abogast. And yes. To what extent is that, is that relationship responsible for the look of this film? Because you even get to the artwork that Lolo produced, and, and the, the look of it is very much part of this film. Yeah, I wanted the film to be glossier in a way than my other films. You know, My other films were very handheld and kind of crazy looking and stuff. I wanted something kind of glossy in a way. I find because the subject matter was a little darker and a little creepy, you know, at times I wanted something kind of sweet and kind of perfect and colorful to kind of contrast with the dark kind of creepy side of the film. Even though it's not that creepy, but you know, it's a little, I mean, the kid is a little creepy, you know, but anyway, um, so, so I kind of wanted that look. And al also I was very, you know, I mean, I, you know, the, the, the artwork, I mean, we, we spent quite some time, you know, I gave examples of like the journal and everything, what I wanted exactly, took pictures of things that I knew that I liked actually and stuff. I used uh, some uh, paintings of my own son. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> For the painting of him when he painted when he was a, a little, his first painting, just that one, don't worry, not the other stuff. But I just thought only a child can do that kind of thing and I thought it was interesting that Lolo could have like children's painting. But Have you let him see the movie though? I would never let him s see the film. No, <laughs> listen, I will let him see the film eventually. He's only seven, so first of all, he's at not at all interested by my films. He's always saying like, mommy, why do you make movies where people talk all the time? Because he <laughs> sees me in the editing room editing the film, he doesn't see the whole film. And he's so bored and he says, why do you do, uh, m mommy, you have to do green screen. You'll finally, <laughs> you know, you, you, you'll never do, you know, you, 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 you have to become successful and make green screen movies, mommy. This makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> uh, you're, when you and your friend Eugenie were talking about this film as you dreamed it up, she said, this is a film about what it's going to be like when your little boy is that age. Ha ha ha. Ha uh, ha ha. No, actually, she just had a boy, uh -huh. Eugenie, my co-writer, and actually, it's going to be her life <laughs> when her kid is that age. No, because I have a feeling my kid is very, he's actually full of empathy. So I don't think it's ever going to be any of us kids because I think... Obviously, you know, there's something about being a mother and having the anxiety of raising a child or being a parent in general, not just a mother, but it's like, how do you raise a child in a way that he's a functioning, happy, not self-destructive, not destructive human being? You know, it's like, you, how do you do it? Like, you know, that's what I liked in Bad Seed is that the parents question, like, what did we do wrong? Maybe they did nothing wrong. Maybe some people are born... I believe there's a tendency, like I feel my son was born like a happy little, you know, son, no matter how dark my life was at the time and stuff, I was de dealing with a lot of stuff, but um, he was a just happy person, you know, he was born happy and, you know, I see kids born in wonderful, happy couple and they're not happy, they're like dark. I don't know what happens, you know? It's genetics, I think, or something, I don't know. The music choices were so interesting, partly because there was um, a jukebox selection, a sense of the kind of young love tunes that were going through this, which suggested young love and fresh starts again. Was that what you were aiming for in the music? Yeah, I wanted something kind of nice. I mean, there's something about, you know, I, I, the truth is, I truly believe you can fall in love in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 20s, teens, uh, any time in life. And actually, when you do fall in love, 
it's really kind of a feeling of being, you know, there's a lightness to it, you know, uh, it's great, you know, I, I uh, and I believe it doesn't really, you know, I think I think the characters are really in love. There's something very sweet about their, their, their relationship. At the end of The Bad Seed, the movie was so unsettling that they had to do this little coda where Patty McCormick comes out as Patty McCormick and, and, says, and I'm just like a real girl, I'm not a murderer. Mm -hmm. But in your film, we get Sabine coming out of the bathroom giving Violette a really dirty look. A really dirty look. Well, because the film is kind of constructed like a thriller or horror film, in a way, you know, like that's like the famous shot at the end of Carrie, when the hand comes out of the grave. That was kind of like what I was thinking. No, because I, I love Carrie, you know, like the hand at the end, like it's like the last image of the film. Mm -hmm. Like this idea that, you know, it's never ending, the horror of children. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't have the Destroying screeching the Bernard Destroying the life uses. is never over. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what Listen, I love my son. Don't get me wrong, my son is a little angel. He's actually not at all like destroying my relationship. Even though, even though he's doing, he's smarter than Lolo. What he does is that he's so cute and loving that you give all the attention and you forget about your actual life. But it's, it's another way of doing it. No right? itching powder needed. No itching powder. No, 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 no. I think my, no, it's, please. It's, like, it's a movie, obviously. No, I want to make sure because, you know. So please thank Julie Delpy, the writer, director, and thank actor you. in this film.